Hello Next.js Conf. Today I'll be speaking to you about building modern CMS driven web applications. It's quite a mouthful, but I'm hoping to not have this as a long winded talk and more of something to sort of incite some thoughts in your heads. My name is Daniel Madelisopiri. Uh, you can find me anywhere online as well. Gambes. I do developer relations at a really cool headless CMS called Strappy. And I put a lot of my techno tracks on Mixcloud as I am a disc jockey, also known as a DJ. If you'd love the resources for this talk, you can go to bit.ly slash nextjs, sorry, nextconf dash strappy. Right. Um, I want to start here. Let's make the web faster. Well, I see two statements. Let's make the web and let's make the web faster. I want to talk about making the web faster. But before I do that, I want to draw parallels to um, the British cycling team. There's a really cool story in a very popular book about how the British cycling team became one of the world's greatest cycling teams, um, all because of one coach and his very interesting approach to or towards getting faster. Rather than trying to improve one thing in a huge way, he decided to, how do I say it, improve everything in the most minute way possible. And I want to draw this parallel to us developers um, or us people in tech and what we're doing to make the web faster. So what does it mean to be faster? Most people would think we're already quite fast enough. How do we even get better? I want to introduce you to the concept of marginal gains, which is exactly what I get out of the story of the British cycling team. They decided to improve almost every single thing, but at least 1% every single day, every single week. And that had huge benefits for the team, as if you do a quick Google search, you find out that they are one of the best and most decorated cycling teams in the modern cycling era. So marginal gains, to be honest, isn't a concept that us software professionals are unaware of. Marginal gains just mean we iterate constantly to improve with releases, with software, with designs, with workflows. We're looking at what could be a bottleneck, what's slowing us down, and improving it in the smallest possible way ever. And yeah, I bet you'd be asking, great, marginal gains, let's make the web faster. How does a CMS fit into this? Well, um, it's really not a complicated answer, to be honest. Um, they simply do. I mean, we are talking about the web, right? Uh, and CMS is a content management system. You might find yourself asking, yeah, CMS is the web. So let's get into what the web is. And, and this is just my very creaky definition. But what is the web? Rather, let me say that again. What is the web but a bunch of content identified by URLs, interlinked by hyperlinks, and accessible over the internet? Really, if you think about it, what is the web? And Next.js, let's go back to marginal gains again, is already making marginal gains in all of its releases. We look at Next 10. We have Next Image, of course, support for Webpack 5, um, the preview releases for real-time previews of your content, more performance improvements. And the same thing happens in Next 10. React 17 support, fast refresh with MDX, image optimization with uh, next image, internationalized routing, um, importing CSS from third party components, and, and the list goes on from next 11, next 10, next 9, next 8. Next has been for a long time now improving the web, right? So, how do we do the same with the CMS? It's not a very easy answer but I hope to demonstrate that here. Building with your front end and optimizing for all the edge cases and optimizing for everything is really cool, right? And behind all the cool stuff that goes on in the front end with all the front end frameworks that people are working on, the front end tooling, 
it's very easy to ignore a lot of the progress being made on the CMS side of things, the backend side of things. Um, and the concept of headless is one that's not new, but now is gaining a lot of traction because we're starting to see the benefits. And I think that's where it starts. How do we do the same with the CMS? How do we make marginal gains? How do we try and make the web faster by concentrating on our CMS too? I think it starts by realizing that building software is a collaborative effort of multiple teams. And once you realize all the players or the systems that come into place or that empower us to ship software, we can sort of start to optimize to make those faster because making those teams faster makes the web faster because we get stuff out much quicker. So who is involved? I like to use this Venn diagram. We have developers, we have designers, we have content managers. And at the center of all those, I like to see headless CMSs because developers do their developer thing. You build your front end, um, be it for the web, be it for other platforms, mobile, wearables. Um, we have designers, of course, who go into the science of how things should look. And then we have content managers who actually go in and enter and put in the content and manage the content so it's, it's in an efficient manner. And headless CMSs are at the center of that. So when you ask yourself, how do we make marginal gains for CMS? You have to ask yourself, how do we make marginal gains for developers? How do we make marginal gains for designers? How do we make marginal gains for content managers? And all that, believe it or not, is possible with your CMS. And I'm gonna demo that. So switching over here to our demo application. And what we see here is a corporate starter that we use to sort of demonstrate um, the value that Strapi as a CMS can bring for building different types of sites. And as we go around the different pages, the pricing page, the contact page, we notice it's, it, it's a bit, it's flexible. So let's go back and let's start to demo and see how we can make marginal gains. Starting with the developer at the bottom of this, we have a nice form. we we'll enter me at malgamvez.dev uh, and click subscribe. This data, of course, gets fed into Strapi. So let's go back into our Strapi backend. We see the email that we just entered. With developers, one thing that they love to have is an integrated environment or integrated suite of, um, of tools. And with Strapi, one way that we can take this further is one, by using webhooks. We could set up a webhook with an external service that can get that lead formation submission and take that on to a third party email provider. But why would I need to do that when I have an email plugin? I can design and edit plugins with a drag and drop interface. This is one of the community plugins built. I'll have a link in the resources um, and you can sort of have different blocks, um, drag out different content um, we can go back here and then we can start adding content. We can add some HTML, we can add a button um, and then edit that button text. We save the design and then we can actually send this email out and all programmatically from the form submissions that come in from our website. So that's one way that we're making marginal gains. We're having all our tools, we're having a suite of tools that our developers can leverage and use to sort of make better experiences. And this goes way beyond just emails. We can integrate larger experiences like quizzes, like crosswords, um, all from data that comes from our CMS. When you go back to your website, you notice a bunch of pages. With designers, let's talk about how we can make marginal gains for designers. When we go to our page here, um, we have this pricing page and we can sort of build out a, we can sort of build out pages. So we, we maybe we want to have a lead form um, for our pricing page. Are you interested in buying? Yes, um, let's say sales at acme 
dot ink um contact us i guess that's a good thing to say and then let's save that and just like that back to our strapy site we should have a new email form on our pricing page are you interested in buying yes sales at acme.inc contact us and this is super interesting because we can like i said before integrate a lot of those workflows that i mentioned and have developers do customization or we can extend the data that we're going from a feature or from a design that we practically put in by pressing a few buttons which is just amazing I think we've seen how we can make marginal gains for the developers, for the designers. What about content managers? With headless CMSs, one thing a lot of people talk about is not being able to preview data. And here I'm going to mix the marginal gains that Next.js have made with their preview mode and the marginal gains that a CMS like Strapi is making and demo what previews look like. Right. So let's go to secret and see what we can do and see how we can make marginal gains for the content managers. This is a secret page, only viewable in preview mode. We have some rich text here um, that says you can only view this in secret in preview mode. And let's say we're making marginal gains for content managers. Let's just add a little bit of something and save that. When we go to the bottom here, we see it's in draft, which means it should not be published on this side. It should not be available if we go to our main site and um, go to um, secret, it should not exist. That's perfect. We have a four or four. So let's go back. And then let's use Next.js's um, preview mode and paste our URL with our secret. Don't tell anyone, for ours is super secret at the moment. Um, so we load that. And now you see our page, you can only view this page in preview mode. We're making marginal gains for content managers, which is perfect, exactly what we wanted to see. And this is all I could show you in the time I had for how CMSs are making marginal gains for developers, designers, and content managers. Let's just do a quick recap of what we're learning. Great. <laughs> so what did we learn? Marginal gains can be applied outside of just developer tools to make everyone faster and make the web faster. And CMSs do actually have a role to play in making the web faster. And last but not least, in all we're doing to make everything faster, we should remember that we're optimizing for the end users. I hope those are great takeaways you can have. Uh, you can have the resources for this at bit.ly slash nextconf dash strappy. And if you'd like to find out more about the marginal gains that CM that Strapi as a CMS will be making very soon with our V4 release, you can go to strapi.io slash V4. And if you'd like to join us, join me as a team or as or join us as a company. We're hiring. If you go to strapi.io slash careers, you can find a lot of openings. Um, and you can come by our booth and talk about a lot of the things that I demoed. We're sponsoring Next.js Conf. So you can come into Discord and look for the Strapi booth and you can talk to myself and a lot of the other teammates. Thank you so much. I hope you've had a great day. Mm -hmm.